Hello, everyone. Welcome into the Guilty as Charged podcast for another episode of Volt Breakdowns. I'm your host, Alex, uh, and I did want to talk a little bit about some recent Chargers news. Uh, this is kind of small Chargers news, didn't really make the waves on Twitter. It's not some big signing or some sexy draft news. Uh, I wish I had that to give you, but I do think it's interesting nonetheless. Uh, the Chargers are in talks apparently to sign. Uh, an interior offensive lineman free agent, which obviously very exciting news. Uh, And so I thought I would just kind of dive into that today and talk about who it is specifically. Uh, Fletcher Mackle, a Louisiana-based sports anchor, has told uh, or has reported that there's a source in Southern California that tells him former LSU football and Saints versatile offensive lineman will clap zeroing in on a deal to join the LA Chargers. Stay tuned. Uh, So this kind of made a little bit of a waves on Twitter yesterday. Obviously, a lot of the reaction is who is Will Clapp, uh, which was also my reaction. So I've done a little bit of some research into him, and I thought it was worth talking about this signing. Um, This is really a depth offensive line signing. I don't think there's any expectation that Will Clapp will start. But there's two very obvious connections I think we have to talk about first. And it's really the connections that we talk about whenever we talk about the Saints, right? So obviously there's this guy right here, Joe Lombardi, offensive coordinator, who's with the Saints for all that, all that time, knows Will Clapp, uh, and kind of wanted to get him involved here. Uh, I think that was pretty clear with the signing. But more importantly, of course, the Chargers did change offensive line coaches. Frank Smith out, goes to Miami, uh, and so now... Brendan Nugent is the Chargers offensive line coach. And if you know anything about Brendan Nugent, like we've talked about on the show, was with the Saints for seven years, coached their offensive line last year. And, you know, since 2017, I believe it is, the Saints have allowed uh, a league, a pretty close to a league low in sacks and pressures and stuff like that. So the Saints offensive line obviously has been good. Brendan Nugent uh, is, you know, was their assistant coach for a long time now in 2021 was their head offensive line coach. And now he's the chargers head guy at offensive line too. So the will clap signing makes a lot of sense when you just kind of look at some of the people that were involved with making it happen. I think it's pretty clear that there were some saints connections that uh, took place here to kind of make this signing happen. Now, in terms of what will clap did for the saints, uh, you know, in 2021 and in previous seasons, it's pretty clear that the Saints just viewed him as an extra guy, right? And there's no better indicator of that to some uh, extent than where he lined up on the field. So Will Clapp has taken uh, a majority of snaps, uh, as actually one Tyler Shoon has said over here. Give me one second. He's actually taken a majority of his snaps at inline tight end or the extra blocker role. Of course, this is sort of what uh, Trey Pipkins did last year. But yeah, from Tyler, Will Clapp has snaps every year. He's been in the league, all with the Saints, 133 last year and 62 the year prior. He has played more of his snaps as that extra blocker in line tight end than any other spot. Uh, Obvious connection to Lombardi and Nugent, like we said before. So he's kind of a depth offensive line piece. Um, And so he's sort of brought on as that extra blocker now. The real question I think here is why do the Chargers think they need an extra blocker? And so um, obviously Trey Pipkins earlier on in the season, prior to him starting uh, towards the end of the season against the Chiefs, right? Trey Pipkins was the guy who was brought in for a lot of jumbo packages, brought in as that extra blocker, you know, (laughs) when they would say 79s coming on the field. That was Trey Pipkins most of the time. Committed some penalties earlier in the season, but got better as that as that jumbo package in line tight end role uh, as the season went on. But now that the Chargers are in a situation where Trey Pipkins or someone like Trey Pipkins is really their swing tackle, right? Norton's currently projected as a starter. We'll see how that holds up after the draft. Uh, and Rashawn Slater, obviously a starter as well. But before the draft, before any other free agent moves, Trey Pipkins is currently their swing tackle. So I think the Chargers are in a position getting an extra blocker someone to do that jumbo package role. Uh, So Trey Pipkins can kind of stay fresh and hop into the game if a swing tackle is needed. That's sort of what this signing kind of seems like. Um, Or if there's a real chance in theory that Trey Pipkins could have a starting role, um, I think that that's something you look at uh, and see what Will Clapp could be potentially just as like 
uh, a piece you move around the offensive line as a whole. Uh, played a lot of snaps at center this year, actually, because he's, he started a game at center. Um, and in the past, in 2020, 2019, he started games uh, in guard as well at both the left and the right guard spots. Uh, that was particularly in 2019. So, you know, he's had experience really at all the spots uh, on the interior offensive line. Of course, we do know that the Chargers need a bit of a backup center, right? Scott Quessenberry has left the team. Uh, and so they have this hole behind uh, Corey Lindsley to fill. I don't think it's necessarily being filled by Will Clapp, but just getting him as an interior offensive lineman piece into that system does make a lot of sense to me. Um, and so that doesn't prevent the Chargers from grabbing a center in the draft, right? Obviously, they're not going to go after Tyler Linderbaum or something like that. But if they want to take a center in the fifth or sixth round, or they just want to take an interior offensive lineman in general, nothing's stopping them. But now they have a little bit of this insurance and, and to use Will Clapp as someone that the coaching staff knows to me makes a lot of sense. And so um, but I, I do think they really view him in this inline tight end role where he's going to be this extra blocker. Uh, there's actually a quote from Will Clapp where he talked about, you know, joking about catching passes uh, when he was with the Saints, obviously. Um, and I'm pretty sure that we know that none of that stuff is going to be happening with the Chargers. And if Will Clapp ever becomes a starting tight end, something has gone seriously wrong with this team. Uh, so I, I don't think anything will happen there. But Will Clapp is, uh, you know, as Nick Underhill says here, that game that he started at center, uh, I believe was the game against Carolina towards the end of the season. I'm not quite sure what the reason for that was. I, I imagine the Saints had some kind of COVID issue potentially, or just their centers were hurt at the time, uh, which allowed Will Clapp to get some action uh, in the game. So I think Will Clapp uh, is a guy that, you know, just makes a lot of sense for this team as, as a depth piece. Um, so I don't think anything is going to necessarily happen instantly. If we're talking about some draft implications uh, of this, like I said, this probably makes the Chargers a little less likely to draft an interior guy early. Um, I don't think it would affect someone like Zion Johnson. If the Chargers want a Zion Johnson level player, we'll clap is not stopping them. But if you get to the fourth round and you're like, well, we don't really like our options here at internal offensive line. Maybe we can wait a little bit later. Will clap is sort of that insurance. And I, I think that that's what they view him as uh, for the time being uh, basically a depth interior offensive lineman piece. If you just kind of want to look at some of the other guys in that room, obviously there's Brendan Hymas uh, who's right there. So, you know, the, the chargers will kind of have to see what, you know, his fate is on the team. Uh, let me just actually pull up the depth chart really quick. So we can just talk about, you know, how will clap will like fit into this group. Um, obviously, like I said, we have Brendan Jaimes, uh, who is our basically kind of backup guard right now. Um, what, I don't know what the Chargers really want to do with him at this point. I think that's still kind of a stash and develop type of situation. Um, but other than, like I mentioned with Brendan Jaimes, uh, Farrell, Trey Pipkins, the Chargers are really bare um, at interior offensive linemen right now. Obviously, they kind of have the guys... Uh, in Corey Lindsley and Matt Filer, Rashawn Slater, that are going to be their starters. But as Brendan Hymas is currently slated to their right guard, I don't think that holds season for no. Um, and Storm Norton is currently projected to be their starting right tackle. I also don't think that holds up, but you never know until the season starts. Obviously, the draft is next week. Or, sorry, the draft is this week. It's in two days. Ooh, got to get my brain calibrated to that fact that it's here so soon again. Um, but it feels pretty clear at this point that the Chargers right now, like a lot of teams in the league, are barren at their uh, backup interior line. Not so happens. Uh, left guard back spots as either the second or third guy at those positions. See how he does in training camp. See how he does when you put him against the bodies that you're going to take potentially in the draft. Um, I, I think that that makes a lot of sense. And this doesn't prevent the Chargers from making any other free agent moves, any other acquisitions. So I think that this makes a lot of sense for them 
as a whole, obviously, the mentions to Joe Lombardi and Brendan Nugent. But let me know what you guys think about this signing or potential signing, I should say, in, uh, in the comments below. Nothing has happened yet, but we do think that uh, we'll clap pretty instantly, uh, potentially after the draft. It will be announced or sometime later this week. It will be announced that he has signed with the LA Chargers based on the indications we have so far. Um, so let me know what you guys think about the signing down in the comments below. Uh, and as always, uh, bolt up.